My name is Chrissy Schneider. I am currently an equine professional services veterinarian for Merck Animal Health, and I graduated from The Ohio State University College of Vet Med in 2009. So I graduated in 2009, and then I did an equine internship in Wisconsin for a year. Then I came back to Ohio State for residency. That was in equine field service, and it was a combined master's and uh, ABVP residency, which is American Board of Veterinary Practitioners, and that was in equine practice. And then I stayed on in equine field service for almost a year, and uh, then transitioned into private practice just east of Columbus um, at an equine ambulatory practice, and I was there for six years before transitioning into animal health industry. I started thinking about a career change in probably early 2019. Um, at that time, it all was kind of catching up with me, and by it all, I mean I had not done a great job setting boundaries, both professionally and personally. I just wanted to say yes at all times, because um, that felt really good um, to be able to help people. I think a lot of us in vet med experience that. And in combination with that boundary or lack of boundaries, I also struggled with a decent amount of perfectionism. So um, both of those things were kind of okay as I was growing my, my caseload. And you know, I, I could say yes, because I had the time to say yes to clients um, and, and my bosses and, and my friends. And, uh, but then as I grew my caseload, there's still only one of me. <laughs> there's still only so many hours in the day. And um, so I just simply had to say no. Um, but that was really difficult for me. So that's kind of where that conflict came in. So logistically, um, you know, when I was a teacher um, at the university, I had students with me every day and I would talk to them about all the different things that we can do with our degree, uh, as, with the veterinary degree, which is a lot. And so I tried to take my own advice and think about other things. So technical writing, um, research, uh, teaching, marketing, things like that, um, and what, what kind of resonated with me or, or excited me. Um, I also talk to a lot of people that do those jobs, so I started with people that I knew personally, of course, because what else are you going to do? Um, and then they very graciously passed on contact information of people that they knew um, in those kind of roles so I could learn about the roles, learn about whether it was something I might enjoy um, and whether I was qualified <laughs> to do those things. Um, and so I kind of settled on the professional services veterinarian position for a variety of reasons. I think it fits my personality pretty well, um, uses my education and my, my experience, which was really important to me. Um, and so once I kind of settled on that, I um, really was all about networking, networking, networking <laughs> constantly. Um, again, starting with people that I knew, so sales representatives or professional services vets that I knew uh, that already worked in the animal health industry, and then um, kind of went from there. And I was so, and still am, very appreciative of all the time that people spent on the phone with me. Um, I mean, 30, 40 minutes on the phone with someone that they had never met, and they didn't even know the contact of the contact, you know, that I had, that had sent me. So uh, it was pretty amazing, uh, the help that I got. And then, so after um, networking with almost 30 people um, in the animal health industry, um, I felt like it was really important that I meet these people in person if I could. So I spent the time um, and the money <laughs> going to conferences in person. So I went to AVMA, I went to the Texas Equine Veterinary Association meeting, I went to the AAEP, American Association of Equine Practitioners meeting, uh, the Midwest Veterinary Conference um, here locally in Columbus, and met with as many people as I could there in person. I handed out business cards that had my picture on them and my contact information, but just to I think kind of humanize me and say, you know, so they can see who I am um, and hopefully ring a bell um, instead of just having a card, you know, that had my picture on it. Um, I do think that was helpful. I had resumes available to give to people if they wanted it. Most people just wanted a business card. Um, and then I followed up with those people um, at an appropriate, um, you know, interval uh, to let them know that I was still interested in a position and so that I would be top of mind um, when a position came available if they could let me know. So 
So this was a really difficult decision to make. Um, the idea of not being a clinical equine practitioner was um, really kind of impossible initially. And, you know, as part of my identity, like many veterinarians, I had wanted to be a veterinarian since I was a little kid. Uh, it was kind of who I was. And, you know, so the idea of changing that was a big deal. Um, in addition to that, I had spent a lot of time, a lot of money, <laughs> and a lot of effort to become a clinical veterinarian. That was always my plan. And so, you know, the idea of not using my education, not using my experience, um, I really didn't like that idea. And so I've been really lucky, and I think a lot of veterinarians are really lucky to use their experience and their education just in a different way. Um, so once I kind of wrapped my, my mind around that, um, that it wasn't a waste, that it wasn't, um, you know, oh, I'm not gonna be a vet anymore. I'm, I'm always gonna be a veterinarian. Um, no one can take my education, my experience away. Um, I also think it's important to add that I think just changing jobs would not have solved my problem. So if I had just um, continued with my lack of boundary setting, continued with my perfectionism and not learned skills to manage those things, they just would have gone with me to my next position. So I reached out finally um, and got help from a therapist. I'm a big proponent of talk therapy. It's helped me a lot um, and I think has made me more successful and happy professionally and personally um, in this new role. So I think if I hadn't gone through that step and just changed jobs, I don't think that would have gotten me where I wanted to be. I was really fortunate that I had the support of my family. Um, I have to admit they were surprised initially when I said that I was gonna pursue something different. Um, but in the end, they just want me to be happy. Um, my husband, my friends, my bosses were really supportive, which I understand is not always the case. Um, they are also my friends, so I was really lucky in that. Um, the college has given me so much support. Uh, I feel really lucky uh, both through the Career Center and also my mentors um, at the college. I think, you know, as mentees or people that look up to our faculty and our teachers, you know, it can be scary to think, um, you know, I'm going to be doing something different than they originally taught me to do. But uh, at least my experience, and I expect experience that everyone would have, is that they just want you to be happy too. Um, and there's, there's a job for everyone. My probably biggest advice would be to try and be aware and learn about yourself if you haven't already done that. Um, and I, that's speaking from my own experience, I had not done that. Um, I just kind of was on autopilot and this is what I do next and this is what I do next. And then I found myself in practice with nothing changing ahead of me unless I changed it. This was it for the next 20 years. Um, and that's where I think I kind of picked my head up and was like, what? <laughs> where am I? What am I doing? Um, and so I think if you're in that kind of position, um, taking the time to learn about yourself, whether that's through therapy or through talking to your mentors or talking to your friends or journaling or you know, there's lots of different ways you can do it. Um, and then, you know, once you've kind of determined maybe what the problems are, you think um, in the position that you have, what would be the next step for you? Is it still another clinical position, just in a different practice? Is it a different species? Is it um, an industry? Is it teaching? I mean, there's so many different things that we can do with this veterinary degree, uh, which is really exciting once you can kind of get to that excitement part. Um, and then once you decide on, on what you want to do, then go for it um, and just kind of be all in. Uh, you know, I had to I invest a lot of time and some money um, in traveling to these conferences and things like that to make the connections that I felt were important to make uh, to get this job. And so I would recommend doing something like that as far as just being all in and networking. That was very important. <laughs>